bats. India has around 120 species of these flying mammals and most of the time they go unnoticed. This is the story about a humble sanctuary in the state of Karnataka called Bhimga and the amazing secret it holds. Bhimgad Wildlife Sanctuary is 190 square kilometers of pristine wilderness situated near the borders of Karnataka, Goa and Maharashtra. The habitat is comprised mostly of tropical broadleaf forests and grasslands. Abundance of rain and perennial streams has made this a haven for wildlife. This area is particularly rich in laterite rocks which plays a very important role in hosting its exotic secret, caves. There are 12 caves found in this wildlife sanctuary. One is at Krishnapur, one is at Bhimgad and another is this the uh, Barapit cave. This is home for this Rotten's free tailed bat, which is found only in uh, three places in the world. One is at Cambodia, uh, one is at Meghalaya, and, uh, and this uh, Barapit cave uh, that's in Karnataka. Exploring and filming one particular cave in Bhimkar was our mission. Rajesh from Bat Conservation India Trust and myself, Shri Hasha, from Landscape Wizards were teamed up to film the bats and the accompanying cave habitat. While the critically endangered Rotten's free tail bat is found only in one small cave inside the sanctuary, the Barapida cave, this was not our ultimate destination. We were after another lesser known and a much bigger cave, the Krishnapur cave. Housed in the cliffs of Krishnapur, this cave is home to thousands of bats. The sheer number of bats inside this cave is truly mind-boggling and is not a place for the faint-hearted. We would be filming a cave habitat that's never been documented before and in complete darkness using state-of-the-art infrared cameras. Access to the cave required an hour-long trek through thick infested forests. The Karnataka Forest Department provided us with much-needed support on the logistics and required permits. The knowledge of the ground staff proved indispensable and was crucial for our success. Camp was set up close to the entrance of the cave and this was to be our base for the next few weeks. Without spending so much time here, it was important that we got comfortable and call it our home away from home. The cave is not a pleasant place by any sorts. It is approximately 450 feet in length from the beginning till the end with three different chambers. An entrance chamber, a lower chamber and a much bigger upper chamber. It is hot and humid inside with temperatures going up to 38 degrees centigrade and 90% humidity. Bats are not known for their cleanliness and with thousands of them flying overhead, personal hygiene was something that had to be conveniently forgotten. There is a constant shower of bat excrements called one. It literally rains bat shit and piss inside. On a hot day, the guano stench can travel quite a distance, even within the forest, and can be quite overpowering. Our time inside was strongly limited by this one factor alone, and headaches and nausea were common. We had to cover our heads with shower caps to avoid getting the guano in our hair, and wear face masks to minimize inhaling the pathogens breeding on the guano. But the guano, as disgusting as it is, molds the habitat and forms the base of a unique ecosystem. Guano covers the entire cave floor and accumulates into gigantic heaps covering over 20 feet in height. 
This nitrogen-rich guano was at one time an excellent source of manure for the local agrarian community. Yearly expeditions were once organized to harvest this valuable fertilizer. Villagers came in hundreds with little regards to their personal safety and inconsiderate to the damages they caused to this fragile habitat. Thankfully, this guano harvest has now been stopped by the forest department and the cave once again belongs to the bats. Krishnapur, along with its riches, has long been forgotten except for a few old timers like Vittal. Vittal, are you still in the car? I am still in the car. You are still in the car? Yes. Do you have any questions? The <laughs> <laughs> The cave houses at least 11 different species of bats, with each species occupying a specific section. Identifying their spread proved to be virtually impossible given the dark conditions and the huge numbers. However, the solution to this challenge lay not in studying the roof, but rather examining the guano deposits on the floor. The upper chamber of the cave is where the insect-eating bats thrive. The lower chamber is dominated by fruit bats and this was called out by the sprouting plants that lay in this nutrition-rich guano. Fruit bats are excellent at dispersing seeds and some seeds obviously made their way into the cave. There is only so much this fertile guano can do for these germinating seeds. With no sunlight to power their growth, these unfortunate pods soon wither away in the dark. Given the huge number of individuals in the cave, interpersonal rules and coordination amongst the different colonies play a very important role. This coordination is put to test every day at sunset when all the individuals have only one thing on their mind. Get out and get food. During this rush hour, the entire population, nearly thousands of bats, emerge from the cave in a spectacular display of traffic coordination. The first to exit are the insect bats from the upper chamber, emerging when the insects are most active in the evening. These individuals fly straight into the foliage, sticking close to the ground, looking out for tasty morsels. The forest is soon reverberating with the cacophony of bats clicking their way around, using echolocation to dodge obstacles and hunt prey. The fruit bats emerge next, and they, unlike the insect bats, fly above the canopy to feed unripe fruits. How far these bats fly through the night still remains a mystery. One of the obvious benefits of this timed emergence is that it eliminates the traffic congestion at the exit points. It minimizes unnecessary injuries caused by colliding individuals. However, there are still instances where bats do fall out of air, like this unfortunate individual. With a broken wing, it can no longer fly out to fend for itself and anything that falls down in the cave is at the mercy of yet another force. Cockroaches. With millions of cockroaches and beetles scurrying around, this is a scene straight out of your favorite nightmare. Accompanying the roaches are spiders, crickets and beetles that burrow beneath the guano, eternally tilling the land. 
Feeding on the guano and anything that falls in on them, these critters seem to have a content lifestyle with very little to worry about. But nature always has a balancing trick up her sleeve. There is one alpha predator inside the cave that's easy to overlook and strikes terror even amongst these nasty critters. Ants. These docile omnipresent ants take on a darker side at sunset. Converging in a swarm, once all the bats have exited from the cave, they prey on anything living or dead. The entire cave floor is soon covered with an overwhelming number of ants driving all the other critters undercover, running for the dear life. But why do they suddenly turn so aggressive at sundown? Nobody knows. With so many fascinations inside, there is yet another surprise. Deep inside, submerged in a trickle of ammonia-rich water, less than a centimeter deep, are cave fish. Isolated in this ecosystem, the fish, most probably of the Shistura genus, seems to defy all odds for just surviving in this hostile location. There is barely enough water to keep the fish submerged and ammonia in water is not healthy. At these levels, most regular fish die. Yet, there seems to be a healthy community of these fish thriving inside. The diet and life cycle of this curious fish is still unknown. Adding an extra flavor to complement the richness of this amazing habitat. The team also came across a common crate lurking near the mouth of the cave, probably to hunt unsuspecting bats. Among the other creatures also spotted inside the cave was an Indian field mouse foraging on beetles and cockroaches hiding behind the crevices. There was also the unexpected sighting of a Bengal monitor lizard, probably trying to prey on roosting bats. A few crabs were also sighted near the water trickle. The biodiversity of this area is immense, but we still do not understand it completely. One danger about it is we never know what we lose when something goes missing. the biodiversity of this area is immense, but we still do not understand it completely. While filming the cave was not easy, the learnings derived out of this expedition made it all worthwhile. If the accessible areas alone yielded so many learnings, one can't help but imagine what are the fascinating creatures are awaiting scientific discovery. There is a lot resting on these dedicated forest watchers to safeguard this treasure. While this is just a glimpse into some of the cave's dark secrets, we know we have barely scratched the surface of this rich guano. <laughs>